So the best way to take a look at sculpting tools is to use a plain old polygon plane. Uh, so with the polygon plane, I recommend using your scale tool in order to uh, scale it up to about the size of the grid or maybe even a little bit larger. So the R key and just pull it out to where you can see the thing that you're working with, right? And to get more polygons in it um, rather quickly, we, you know, first off, we scaled this up. These, this, uh, these polygons are rather large. We need a little bit more resolution in order to um, be able to sculpt with this thing and actually see our results without them looking crunchy. We'll, we'll kind of see that. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and hit the smooth button a couple times. I'm going to hit it once. I'll kind of let it do its thing. OK, it did it. And I'll hit it again. And we have quite a few polygons. Um, that's a somewhat dense mesh. We can, we can deal with that. If you did more or less, it's OK. Uh, if you did a million polygons, you're going to have a slow computer today. Um, but the sculpting tools are unsurprisingly found in the sculpting tab on our tool shelf. OK, so next to polygons, up there at the top where it says polygons, next to that, sculpting, right? And we're naturally going to start with the leftmost tool, which is adequately or uh, appropriately named the sculpt tool, right? Big surprise. Um, so with the sculpt tool, uh, you should see a little circle around your mouse cursor. If you don't, uh, you just see this tiny little square and no circle. Have no fear, we're gonna we're gonna fix it. But um, you should see a little circle around there. If not, I want you to. Uh, I don't see it, so I want you to join me by double clicking on the sculpt tool to bring up the tool settings. Okay, they appear in a, a window that's a floating window. So uh, first off, if you see the little circle around your mouse cursor, then uh, it should look something like what you see on my screen now. You can click and drag, and you will either um, raise or lower the mesh, right? This is a lot easier way to model details and features than it is by hand, right? I think everybody could kind of agree with that. So the the size of the circle here that determines you know the area that's affected. So I made kind of a, a, a hill, if you will, there. Uh, the size is in this tool settings window, right? And and so that thing is found, uh, and you'll need to go ahead and do this, everybody. Double click on the sculpt tool, and it will spawn the tool settings window right which is a floating window and this this has at the very top there size and strength you can probably figure out what those do but um, you know adjust them to see right so with uh, lower strength you're gonna have a um, less power that you you pull a surface with or sculpt it or stamp it or we're gonna learn a lot of different things about what you can do with it uh, the size is going to determine the size of the brush. So too large of a brush, and you won't see the circle. And when you try to sculpt, uh, you might raise the whole entire plane all at once. I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like. So you might raise your whole plane. It might make, you know, starting of a video game map there or something like that. Um, too small of a size, and... Well, you're not going to get very much action uh, whenever you move your mouse around. So it, it be could become spiky, which uh, may look cool, but there are better ways to do it with the, uh, uh, yeah, it's not very cool because this is what I'm going to call, you're going to hear me call it crunchy, okay? Crunchy meshes uh, look nasty because uh, they just, you know, it, it's it's a, like artifacts, like like straight lines between the polygons there. Um, so I know we're kind of harping on this first tool here, but it's 
definitely one of the most important because its tool settings apply to most all of the other tools. So we have size and strength kind of figured out. If you just play with that, you're going you're gonna to get used to it. There's an invert button under strength, and I want you guys to try that out. Okay, tick that little box there, and whenever you um, draw now, you'll see that you create valleys rather than hills, right? So um, insetting something rather than uh, uh, raising it. Okay, so um, there are a few other adjustments. One that's very notable is called steady stroke. Uh, if you turn that on, which I have it on because I prefer it, it your mouse kind of lags behind wherever you've moved it. Um, you're going to see a line appear, an arrow on mine. Basically, this helps you create straight lines and smooth features because your mouse is shaky. So what it does, well, most people's mouse is a little shakier than their hand because it's hard to draw with a mouse. But with steady stroke, it averages your mouse movements in a certain direction, okay? It lags behind the mouse, letting you correct. So if I'm kind of shaky with my mouse, you can see I'm still drawing somewhat of a straight line, even though I'm being intentionally very, very shaky. It kind of averages out your moves, right? I find it pretty useful, so check it out in, um, in the tool settings, turn on steady stroke to try that out. So I'm bored of this plane, and I'm going to go ahead and um, grab a, a sphere because I'm bored. I'm going to give it some polygons, and I'll start sculpting on it. Now, um, this... This sphere is going to um, be a place where I can show you some of the other tools. So let's say I was making, um, let's just say I was making an eye socket or something like that. And I was having trouble making the indent using the sculpt tool, right? Like I'm trying to make the, the eye socket and there's this thing in the middle and I just can't get rid of it. Right. Well, there's other tools in here, in your in your sculpt toolkit that are going to be a little easier. So one of them kind of looks like an egg, and it's called grab. Okay. This you use the grab tool, and you select a region, and you push or pull, depending on what you want to do. Great for making spiky hair, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's also good for just shaping. I use it for shaping. Um, kind of large areas on objects. So if I were making like a little alien dude with his his eyeballs kind of popping out, little cartoon guy, I might use it to start shaping uh, the generalized areas. So uh, that's the grab tool. Now, if you've over-dramatized uh, something, you might want to use smooth, OK? Smooth is the next tool over from Sculpt. You can hover and it will give you a tool tip, that, that beige box. Um, and smooth, um, unfortunately, kind of pushes everything back where it came from, but it, it um, lessens the impact of what you've done. The opposite of smooth is found on the right side here, amplify, okay? That's gonna, that's gonna make whatever you've done a little bit more powerful. Yes. Yeah, this, this, um, this stuff, the settings in here are where things get really fun and you start to look at really what you could do um, with this, right? So let me, um, let me try to exemplify that I'm messing up here. Try to exemplify that with a what we're going to, um, Maya's going to call a stamp, okay? I'm going to actually. Um, move back from my ball. I just hit the delete key. I'm going to go to polygons, grab a polygon plane, scale it up, and smooth it a couple times. Uh, you guys should try to get back to your polygon plane or something that has a decent density. Okay, I'm actually going to crank up the 
density of this mesh one more time to show this next tool. Um, OK, maybe I did it two more times. I'm not sure. I cranked up the density of this mesh to show you guys in higher resolution what I'm going to try to do. So under sculpting, um, we are not going to cover each one of these tools individually. Just know that sculpt raises or lowers. Uh, smooth obviously does what it says. Relax. Um, kind of reorganizes the mesh where it's not so what I call crunchy and doesn't really reduce uh, the features on it. Grab is important. Pinch, flatten, foamy, uh, spray. These, these things you'll have to experiment to find out. But the one I wanted everyone to check out right now is called Inprint, okay? And it looks like a rubber stamp. I'm going to show you. Yeah, I'll show you. It's cool. Inprint is super neat. So under Inprint, um, this is kind of like the rubber stamp in any graphics program, okay? We want to look at the tool settings on Inprint for sure. So if you don't have tool settings up, let's double click them. And first off, there's a lot of cool stuff in the settings. Um, I'm going to go over some of it in a minute for just the normal sculpt tool. But the one we care about for this one is called Stamp, okay? In the tool settings for Stamp, uh, we have to drop them down. We're going to click on Use Stamp. And we're going to click on the button Pick Stamp. This is the tool settings for the imprint tool. Pick Stamp, you get a window that appears that has a lot of, I know this is shocking, but stamps in it, right? So uh, I'm going to pick the one that's like kind of looks like brick. And I'll X this window out. You can see in my tool settings for imprint under the stamp area that I've chosen the brick stamp. Now to use this, you want a, a mesh with density. And you want to click and drag. And when you drag, if you don't let go, you can orient and size your stamp. And when I do let go, I imprint my stamp on my mesh. Right. So it's pretty neat that um, you can make these sort of adjustments, uh, well, or make these sort of patterns pretty easily. Right. This is useful for, well, a lot of stuff. Because there are stamps for things like stone, um, leaves. I'm going to do a leaf one because that sounds cool. Um, this is just way cool. I love um, using stamps. So you can see weird spiky patterns, yeah. But it's kind of a leaf with a, a root structure. This is also going to be cool for making terrains, right? So if I undo a couple times and I maybe use my imprint tool and I turn the strength up on it, well, turned up the strength a little too high, I think. You can double click um, to get the tool settings on any tool. So just double click to get the tool settings. Click, click, you get a window. And it's in the drop down options on that window called Stamp. And it's under the button Pick Stamp. OK, so I'm going to pick a different one to show you the terrain that I was talking about. Uh, let me just use the cliff face um, stamp here, which looks like this. You'll have to play with this, guys. There is. Um, it's an, in, uh, it's an intuitive thing that you, you, you really do get a feel for. So I'm going to let go of that. And look at this. I'm making like a terrain map for a video game, maybe. Um, quickly, that is, that is so easy uh, compared to hand modeling that. Look how that already looks like it's like a, um, well, if I keep building it up, it could be like a mountain range, right? Maybe this is the edge of, a, of Blood Gulch here. Anybody remembers Halo 1? Hey. Anybody remember Halo 1? Is that? I hope so. I mean, Halo Reach? Look at this. We're getting mountains here. And um, 
I didn't even do any vertex editing. This is incredible. So the stamp tool is amazing because uh, you can do all kinds of stuff. Now, let's say you're doing all kinds of stuff and you say, but oh, my pristine mountain, I want to, I, you know, I, I need to carve, um, I need to go in here and I need to make the, the mud ruts, you know, for um, the uh, warthogs driving through on Halo, right? And I've made the little mud ruts, but I said I, I didn't want them to um, actually make ruts on the areas that are rock, right? Because that doesn't make any sense, right? Rock doesn't deform like mud does. So I draw my mud ruts all the way up here, and oops, this boulder here, I got mud ruts on that boulder. Well, there's a tool for that, okay? So that, we can use this, this um, snowflake looking thing called freeze. And if we use the freeze tool, we're going to uh, be able to paint areas. And I'm going to go ahead and increase my size here. We're going to be able to paint areas that we do not want to change. Okay, We don't want changes in these areas. You paint them. They, they are frozen. Right? It's like putting water in the freezer. And then you're free to go ahead and make um, changes elsewhere. And it will not change uh, the area that's frozen. Okay, so um, that could be useful not just for uh, mud ruts in my Halo Blood Gulch scenario here, but it, it's useful for uh, facial features, for armor, um, all kinds of stuff that we're going to be modeling, right? But look at that. Like if that was uh, going to be colored as stone later, you can see that it's realistic and that my ruts from my, my tractor or my warthog or whatever did not make ruts in the stone, okay? So um, that's pretty cool, I think. Uh, play around with these tools. See what you think. Tomorrow or in the next lesson, we're going to uh, learn how to import some base meshes, which means some basic kind of basic, basic character models that already have the generalized shape. Oh, yeah, some of you guys will find them today, uh, but we're going to learn them formally tomorrow. You guys will see that you can sculpt on top of dinosaurs and cows and things to get uh, quick models going on, right? So, um, yeah, definitely check out the sculpt tools. So much easier than manual polygon editing that um, despite how I taught last year where it was mainly um, manual polygon editing, I don't want... Uh, to be squeamish about the sculpt tools this year at all. So, cool.